Great products, low prices, helpful service. That's Harris Ace Hardware. Harris Ace is your place for Yeti coolers, Traeger grills, Costa de Mar sunglasses, Calcutta Renegade coolers, plus Harris Ace is your hometown dealer for yellow wood treated lumber. Harris Ace will not be undersold on price, so you know you're getting the best price at Harris Ace. Your favorite place for hardware and lumber supplies is Harris Ace Hardware, West Cherry Street in Jessup. Time now for a little latest in local sports and sports. The Braves searching for a new third baseman as free agent Josh Donaldson has agreed to terms with the Minnesota Twins four years, $84 million. Donaldson, age 34, three-time All-Star, 2015 American League MVP, hit 37 home runs last year for the Braves, drove in 94 runs, and no longer an Atlanta Brave, now a member of the Minnesota Twins. More fallout from the baseball cheating scandal as Red Sox manager Alex Cora has agreed to leave his position with Boston. He still faces disciplinary action from MLB for his role in sign stealing by the Astros in a similar scheme in Boston. Cora participated in both schemes, condoned the players' benefit from the sign stealing, and Cora out as manager of the Boston Red Sox. High school baseball less than a month away. First game February 10th down in Brunswick, Georgia against the Pirates. Tryouts are underway at the high school, and Coach Justin McDonald says the team's getting ready for the 2020 season. Coach Justin McDonald, second day of baseball tryouts. A lot of kids out, There's a lot of excitement as the season's right around the corner. Yeah, it is, and, you know, it's always a good time of year, and when the when trials start, unfortunately, on our part as, as a coaching staff, it's it's not a good week when you well, you you got to stay within a certain number to make this thing work, and, you know, everybody dreams of playing for Wayne County, and it's tough on our end to to have to tell somebody that, that it's not going to work out. But, you know, we've had kids before that, that we've we've said that to and they come back the next year and they made the team and and, 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 and been a big influence on our program. So, uh, again, just a, just a week to, to kind of kick it off and, and you'll we'll finalize the, the rosters here and into this week. We still have a few that, that are uh, basketball and wrestling, so they'll come out at a later date. But, again, we'll get this thing finalized this week and start getting ready for the season. The weatherman's cooperating with you. Nice weather to, for tryouts. Yeah, it is. I know 81 and out here in short sleeves and in January, you know, I guess they save the cold weather probably for the first week of the season when we play, but, but you know, we're used to it. So, uh, again, uh, I think it's going to cool off next week. We're going to start inter-squadding here towards the weekend and then kind of get this thing headed in the right direction. They're looking to schedule 30 more games to be played and some tough uh, tournaments. Uh, Good trips, good competition that you always lined up to get everybody ready for the region schedule. Yeah, we do. I know first weekend, well, the first week we got Brunswick and Brantley here, uh, two teams around here that, that can give you fits if you don't come ready to play. And then that weekend we head over to Leesburg and play Lee County and Jeff Davis. And, you know, those two have been in the mix. Uh, Jeff Davis won it a couple of times, and Lee County's played for it a couple of times. So that's the teams we want to see where we stand and see what we got to work on and improve. And then I think two weeks later we head up to Atlanta to the tournament, get Blessed Trinity and Whitewater, who are always competitive teams. And, you know, we do that for a reason, to get ourselves ready and, you know, if, uh, fortunately win some games on the way. Good nucleus coming back. Pitching's always a strong suit for Wayne County. you got several of those starters coming back. So pitching should be pretty good. Yeah, I think out of the 20 wins we had last year, 19 of those come back between – uh, Stanfield and Ray Townsend, so uh, we're looking for some other guys to step in and fill some of those holes that, that left us last year, but like I said, the nucleus of that, that one-two punch that we had last year, they're coming back and, you know, they're looking for great things out of, out of them, uh, Jasper being a senior, Ray being a junior, and some other guys stepping in, but you got to be able to pitch, and, you, you know, when you get to the playoffs, if you can't pitch, you're not going to go very far, and, and fortunately, though, that that we've had a, we've had success of doing that over the last few years. I know in my tenure, the head coach, we've always been able to pitch and play defense, and you know, we just got to find a way to put the, put something together offensively and and try to make it run at this thing. Well, both your shortstop and second baseman for the last couple of years at University of Georgia, so you got to fill that middle infield. That's the big question: who's going to fill those spots? Yeah, there there there's there a lot of guys that are going to compete for it. Uh, you know, we have some ideas, but we're going to let it play out and, and see what guys step up and, 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 and make a charge at it and find ourselves in there. But, you know, that's always a uh, – it's been we've been spoiled here over the last three years with two guys that kind of sat right there and you never had to worry about it, never had to worry about them playing, playing at a high level. So it's uh, something we're going to have to kind of make sure we, we, we're patient with and let it play out and give guys opportunities. But I think there's some guys that are going to take advantage of it and, and be great there. What about your hitting? Uh, we're going to be fine, you know. Hitting's going to be a little bit behind as far as uh, inner squads and that type of stuff. We've been throwing bullpens for about four, five, six weeks somewhere in there. So uh, we're going to start inner squad and go and get our guys in in the box against some live hitters and 
and try to get them accustomed. You know, February the 4th, the scrimmage against Vidalia is not far away, so we got to see as many live pitches as we can and then get those guys ready. Okay, Coach, everybody's getting excited. The spring schedule is about to kick in, like I said, less than a month away, and we look forward to Wayne County Yellow Jacket Baseball. Yeah, it's here. Appreciate it, Bob. When Coach McDonald will join us this morning on the World Fans Bishop Ball Show. We'll talk more about Wayne County High School baseball as the schedule, again, less than a month away. Another baseball note in Major League Baseball, the Braves Park has a new name. SunTrust Park is now Truist Park, the new name due to the merger of SunTrust Bank and BB&T. Many fans want a stadium named after Hammer and Hank Aaron, but a team spokesman says that they plan to honor Aaron in another way. They said they're going to renovate a local baseball field each year for the next 10 years and rename those fields after Hank Aaron. After LSU won the national championship game Monday night, the final football poll has been released. LSU is one, Clemson two, Ohio State three, Georgia finishes number four, Oregon five, the Gators of Florida six, Oklahoma seventh, Alabama eighth, Penn State ninth, and Minnesota rounds out the top ten. It's Wisconsin eleven, Notre Dame twelve, Baylor thirteen, Auburn fourteen, Iowa fifteen, Utah sixteen, Memphis seventeen, Michigan down at eighteen, App State nineteen, and Navy rounds out your top twenty. High school football banquet set for tomorrow night at the Commons area of the high school. Tickets will be $15 tomorrow night at the door. A lot of awards to be handed out tomorrow night at the high school. And don't forget, Saturday, February 1st, Super Bowl Saturday at the Country Club, the Wayne County Touchdown Club's $10,000 drawing. Tickets on sale, $100 each. Again, the tickets are available at Prime South Bank. See Katie at the bank. She has tickets available for that drawing. And Saturday night, February 1st, at the Country Club. Again, a good way to kick off Super Bowl weekend. That's going to do it for latest in local sports. Sports is brought to you each and every day this time by friends at Harris Ace Hardware. It's no secret, people love their Hondas. And with some of the highest customer satisfaction and resale numbers, it's no wonder why. And the best place to buy your Honda is Walker Jones Honda. Because Walker Jones Honda is the home of the lifetime warranty at no extra cost to you. It's good 24-7, coast to coast. Walker Jones will treat you like good friends and neighbors should. That's the Walker Jones way of doing business. And you can count on Walker Jones to give you the best deal on your new or previously owned Honda. We're talking Accord, Civic, CRV, Pilot, Fit, and everything else in Honda's line of automobiles. Find out why Honda buyers come back again and again. Why people love their Hondas. Put us to the test. Never settle for second best. Walker Jones Honda. Memorial Drive in Waycross and online at walkerjoneshonda.com. Honda, the power of dreams. WIFO and WLOP have an opening for a sales and marketing representative. We need a highly motivated person, someone who's willing to be trained to help local and area businesses increase their sales through effective radio advertising and marketing. Resumes can be dropped off here at our studios at 2420 Waycross Highway in Jessup or email to cwhubbard at bellsouth.net. Jessup Broadcasting, an equal opportunity employer. 801 here at the Big Dog WIFO as we move towards the world-famous Butch and Bomb Show. Uh, Coach Mack will be the um, guest this morning. He had a great picture that he posted online of, of the bow at night. And they say the, the, what's happened is the fires in Australia, all that smoke is circling the globe. It's supposed to really create some beautiful sunsets. But that was a great sunset over, over the bow. Looking forward to Wayne County baseball coming up here in less than a month. I could ask him about the maintenance staff too. What was that the practice yesterday? The grass is about as green as I've ever seen it this yeah, time of year. It looks great out there. looks great out there. I went great. and checked on the crowd. Mike, it's still hanging in out there. We put the thing up there five years ago as just a throwaway, and it's been hanging in there ever since. Get that thing tested here shortly, and uh, the blimp is ready to go. There you go. We got the tire pump, and I've been working on it about halfway, got it halfway inflated. All right, the world famous Butch and Bob shows up next on WIFO after this quick update from Fox News Radio. Three main reasons people buy vehicles from one dealership over another are price, service, and selection. Woody Folsom Ford has the right price. New 19 Crew Cab F 150 XLT gives you either up to $14,000 off MSRP or 0% for 72 months. Service? Hey, nobody's better. Let me tell y'all about selection. We got over 450 new Ford F-150s on the ground and on sale. Super selection of Ford Super Duties too. F-2, 3, 4, and 550s right here in Baxley. 
Some restrictions apply, but not many. Ford Expedition, over 70 in stock. And any new 19 can be yours at up to $13,000 savings. Ain't nothing to it but to go on and do it. Over 80 all-new 2020 Ford Explorers. Woody Folsom Ford. Better get to Baxley for the right price, service, and selection. It's the price. Dealer for detail. Celebrating 50 years as the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. Fox News. I'm Chris Foster. At the Democrats' seventh debate of the presidential campaign, Joe Biden and Amy Klobuchar disagree with the idea of Medicare for all. That's doubling the entire federal budget. The answer is a nonprofit public option. She's one of four senators in the race who will be largely off the campaign trail for President Trump's impeachment trial. Elizabeth Warren says about that. If we have an impeachment trial, I will be there because it is my responsibility. The debate in Iowa was on CNN. The House votes today to send articles of impeachment to the Senate with President Trump's trial there set to start next Tuesday. Today at the White House, he'll sign a trade deal with China. Our phase one trade deal with China massively boosting exports of products made and produced right here in the great state of Wisconsin. The president at a rally in Milwaukee. America's listening to Fox News. The Fox News Rundown is a weekday morning podcast that dives deep into the major and controversial stories of the day. Hosted by the anchors of Fox News Radio. Subscribe now to hear a perspective of news you won't find anywhere else. Listen now by going to foxnewspodcasts.com. I'm Neil Cavuto from Fox Business. I'm Liz Clayman. And I'm Charles Payne. Life is too short not to go long. We care about your success. Your American dream. Fox Business. Invested in you. Subscribe and listen to the latest from Fox News Podcasts. It's the Impeachment Witch Hunt with Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. A must listen to get the full legal view of the current impeachment. Greg lays out the historical context and what is on the line legally. All the facts, all in one place. Due process does apply to congressional investigations. Go to foxnewspodcasts.com to download and subscribe now. America is listening to Fox News. Murphy's Builder Supply is where you need to go for all your home improvement projects and hardware needs. They've been serving folks in this area since 1946. Murphy's offers some products and services that you may not know about. They now sell ammunition, both bullets and shells. Murphy's also sells personalized tags for dog collars. They build customized screens for windows and doors. Murphy's can re-key locks, and of course they can make keys. They cut glass for windows, plus Murphy's has monthly door buster specials. Check their Facebook page to see what's on sale. Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broadway. Street, Jessup. For the best car wash at the best price, then go to the new Nips Car Wash located at 459 Highway 301 South down from McDonald's in Jessup. Nips Car Wash features state-of-the-art IQ automatic car wash system. Every car or truck that enters the automatic IQ wash system is scanned to capture its unique vehicle profile to give you a great car wash every time. Nips Car Wash also features two self-service bays where you can choose from a variety of accessories such as foam brush, tire brush, bug off, wax, clear coat, and spot free rinse with powerful blowers located in each bay to top off your car wash experience at an affordable price. For the best quality car wash around, go to the new Nips Car Wash located down from McDonald's on the left on Highway 301 South in Jessup. That's Nips Car Wash with a state-of-the-art IQ automatic wash system on Highway 301 South down from McDonald's in Jessup. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcasting, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. Show. All right, Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. Seven minutes after 8 o'clock, it is a Wednesday morning, right slap in the middle of the week, right slap in the middle of the month, 15th day of January. World famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, located on Northeast Broad Street here in downtown Jessup, right down from the Big Red Caboose, and by Nips Car Wash, located on Highway 301 South, just past McDonald's on the left-hand side. And, Bob, uh, I guess we're talking baseball this morning. Is that correct? I'm definitely talking baseball. I said I had to interview Coach McDonald on sports, but decided to bring him in and talk 
30 minutes of high school baseball season right around the corner, less than a month away, February 10th down in Brunswick, Georgia. Brought his assistant, Barrett Brynan, with us. So just thought we'd talk Wayne County baseball. Exciting time. You know, we got 30 games on Big Dog Country beginning home and away. Listenership's always high. Out of the roof. You know, like I said, it's amazing how many people from out of town listen to Wayne County baseball and comment. Like I said, when I go to a place like Baxley and Pierce, they say, yeah, we listen to Wayne County baseball all the time. We love Wayne County baseball. So, Got a lot of fans all around the state of Georgia, Coach. So yeah, looking we forward to it. And I know, I, you know, there's a lot of programs across the state, but this one's different. You know, there's the support from the community and the the amount of people that actually come to games and and enjoy being in that atmosphere. And you know, I've always challenged people: let's create the atmosphere that we have in April, late April and May. Let's create it in February. So let's let's fill it up from the start and get behind these kids. I I know they feed off of it every year when when they look up and that place is, is packed or the chairs are being put out prior to the game. You know that that gets them excited and gets them uh, a little bit a little bit more ready to play. So uh, we encourage everybody out to to start. I know February fourth is our uh, our scrimmage against Fidelia, that's at home, so we can start packing that thing out in February the 4th. Well, again, talking to you yesterday, several holes to fill from last year's team. Like I said, the middle infield is the big vacancy. You know, Cooper is gone, Griffin's gone. But those are two key positions. As you mentioned, they were kind of the mainstays the last several years. They started, you know, when they were young. So yeah. you got to fill that middle infield, and pitching seems to be – Going to be a strong suit again. I should mention a lot of the pitchers are back from last year. Jasper Stanfield, Ray Townsend, some others. So, got to feel good about the pitching staff. But talk a little bit about the overall lineup. You know, all these openings that you got to fill. Well, there, there's quite a few kids that are going. To, you know, we got probably ten to twelve kids that at any time can be in the lineup. You know, it's going to be difficult on our part to to kind of get them all in at one time, and, and we're going to have to be, I guess, uh, creative with it to give them all. Uh, uh, chances and opportunities to produce but you know at the end of the day when when we put that lineup together we're going to take our best nine hitters or and then put them on a board and then put them in a position to play I think in the high school game I know we're going to pitch and you know, the guy sitting next to me he's going to do a great job with the pitching pitching staff so you know we got to find a way to get those nine guys in a lineup and you know we're going to pitch and play defense we just got to got to be better offensively this year. Now Barrett's with us so Barrett you know you've been helping out last couple of years you know you get a full-time job now you're a full-time teacher so now you're on staff full-time is this a how much is, is that going to benefit our pitchers to have you there full-time i sure hope it helps a lot i hope it benefits them a lot um <clears throat> it's it's certainly a, a plus for me to get to spend more time uh with my mind on baseball um now being a teacher um i obviously have my job during the day uh, but being able to be right there at the stadium that way, every time I'm out there in the mornings doing morning duty, like I just got finished doing, I'm staring at the baseball field. You know, plays are running through my mind, pitchers are running through my mind, when they can pitch, how much I can use them. Um, it's just being in being in the school system now has allowed baseball to stay at the top of my mind at all times. Well, um, for folks who don't know who Barrett Browning is, tell us a little about your history at Wayne County and then afterwards in pitching. Uh, played at Wayne County and graduated in 2002. Um, went on to Middle Georgia College, Chipola College, and Florida State for four years of school. <clears throat> uh, after that, went to the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim organization for six years and the Cardinals organization for about two years. Okay, so you know, folks are well, who's Barrett Brown? Why is he uh, coaching pitching? Well, you've got the creds. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've I got can, the experience. I can do it. Teaching coach, is coach, a lot Donald's different. Donald's got to feel fortunate to have yeah. him on the staff, don't you, Coach? I do. I, I'll be honest. My 12 or my nine years as the head coach, I've never dealt with pitchers. You know, you know Coach Mullis was with us for – I guess eight of those years and, and he kind of, he come in the last three or four and kind of taken over. So I've never dealt with them. I don't plan on dealing with pitching. I just let them guys handle it. Okay. Well, I just wanted to delay the, you know, it's a lot of folks move in and out. They don't know, you know, can't remember who pitched for Wayne County and what they did. So he's got the creds. And so, um, uh, I think the, the pitching staff, these young kids out there are fortunate to have some of your experience, Barrett, out there teaching them, coaching them. You know, you tell them your experiences that you've had through the years and I'm sure it's got to be helping them tremendously. I sure hope so. I have to just my my thing. I try to do is pull the reins back a little bit. I have a fear of kind of blowing their mind sometimes. I can feed them full so much information in a hurry that they can become overwhelmed, you know, and it can be counterproductive. So um, the big thing for me uh, that I try to focus on is keeping it simple for them. Okay. Uh, give them a few things to work on at the time and let them master those things before we move forward. Okay. Do you find them receptive? They pretty much listen to you. Very much so. Uh, I mean, these guys. 
the, the beauty of, of being a part of Wayne County baseball and Wayne County as a community is, is the parents are in here do a great job of raising young men that um, want to be better or respectful, uh, that carry themselves in the right way, uh, and truly believe in what's going on here. Coach McDonald and his previous staff have done a great job of setting the bar high, uh, and those young men want to be a part of another group that can, can reach that bar and exceed it. Uh, so definitely they are very receptive to anything we try to uh, lay upon them. What else is going to be throwing? I mean, we know you got Jasper and Ray coming back. Pretty good one-two punch. Who else is on that staff that you're working with? Most most of our staff's back from last year um, uh, out there at trying out. You know, right now we we have yet to see everybody throw. We've got some guys, some arms that we still want to see. Um, we don't want to set anything in stone right now. Um, we're not really going to put any names out there just due to the fact that we want it to be a completely open process for all the players. Um, I feel like if you set if you set names in stone at this point in the, in the season, then it may deter guys from working harder. They may feel like there's no reason to if there's one slot open and seven guys working for it. Um, you know, well, I don't think we have those type of young men in this program. Uh, but I want it to be. I want every guy to feel like they get a fair shot at it um, because. Truth be told, I mean, we may have a set and start starting uh, rotation uh, today. It could change tomorrow based on performance or based on uh, an assortment of other things. So, um, I really try to, as a as a coaching staff, we're trying to encourage every guy out there, whether they've pitched before or not. We want to see their arm if they've got a good one. We want to see if we can make use of it. Oh, Barrett, if you know, do you ever get out there and just say, "All right, if they're not getting it, do you get up on the mound and?" throw a heater right down the middle and say this is how it's done it's happened it's happened <laughs> <laughs> now i don't know I, I went out there yesterday and tried to throw bp and it didn't go very well but uh i've never been very good at throwing bp tom jern and some of those other guys can attest to that um but you know it's there's times definitely where i want to get out there and just show them and sometimes it is the best thing to do to actually let them see it done um because sometimes the way i'm explaining it uh, as hard as i try I may not be able to yeah. make it um easy to understand where some guys are visual learners, uh, and that's the that's the most fun part to me of coaching is learning the guys and mm-hmm. and what um, what is their what form of learning, uh, learning their personalities, what what gets them competing at the highest level mentally, uh, physically. How do they learn? How do you teach them best? That's it's a it's a okay. challenge and it's fun. We got a text in here. Folks can always call, text in questions or comments during the uh, Butch and Bob Show or any other time. You can text us at our regular business line at nine one two four two seven three seven one one. Nine one two four two seven three seven one one. I'll go back to Coach McDonald on this one. Someone texted in and said, "How can I work with my seven year old now to help him prepare to play middle school and high school baseball?" I, I think uh, you know I get asked that question a lot. I think the number one thing at, at that age, and you know I have a three year old, soon to be four, about to get involved. I think the number one thing at, at that age is make it fun for him. You know, I think uh, sometimes uh, parents can be the worst enemy of, of dragging a kid to the field and, and forcing him to do stuff. I, I, number one, I think they have to want to do it. But, you know, the biggest thing I think he concentrated at this level is the just the basic fundamentals of the game, throwing and catching, fielding, and, and just yeah. hitting off a tee, that type of stuff. So uh, hand-eye coordination stuff. But, again, the biggest thing, if, it, if, if it's not fun for them when they're going out there and doing it, then I think you are kind of – it's kind of – counterproductive if it's not fun for them. yeah i've got uh, uh grandkids that are around that age a little bit older a little bit younger in that age and i always say you know are you having fun yeah. you know whether what sports they're playing or do i say you know go out there and just have fun it's the same at our level if, it, if our guys aren't having fun I know, I know there's times where i sit back and and look in the mirror and wonder if, if we're making it fun or 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 if it's a it's kind of a different mentality of them coming to the park we want them to have fun because i know if you're having fun when it's going to come and it, it becomes contagious and you know I used yesterday at trials. Trial yesterday at trials probably one of the best day two of trials I've ever had in my career here. You know there was kids laying out for balls and balls flying out of the ballpark, and you know everybody was having fun while we we're out there. And you know that that makes for or a day to go go by a little bit quicker, and you and you know you accomplish something. Well, it is a game. Uh, the same person just uh, texted in after you answered the question. It says, "So is travel ball too soon for a seven year old?" Or <laughs> Bears going, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think I think so. You know, uh, you know the the play and play and play and deal. That that seems to be the the uh, you know that's the big debate in baseball. The travel ball is up and coming, but I think there's there's too much time spent on playing and not enough time on skill development. You know, at that age, you know we had if you don't have skill development and you're not developing your your skill and your craft, then you're kind of kind of waste your time playing a game. You know, those guys, those guys may play on a weekend, but they don't practice before they play so i i think you at that age you you know we used to fall the fall is pretty much skill development 
and then we play in the spring and, right. and some in the summer. So you got pretty much six months out of the year you play, and six months you you work on your skill. And of course, in that six months of working on a skill, you have time off. So I think there's a I, I encourage a you know a seven year old. I think they need to try to play everything: basketball, baseball, soccer, anything, football. They need to play it all and 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 enjoy it while they can. You know. We're all about guys playing playing more than one sport, and you know there's some that 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 kind of focus on baseball, and you know some of the ones that have done that over the past have had a future in baseball, and they went on to play at the next level. But you know we encourage guys to play everything, and you know again travel ball. There comes a time when it's important. I know when, once you start getting into that ninth, tenth, eleventh grade year, when you you're trying to get out there and get seen, you know. We're in we're in Wayne County in Southeast Georgia, so there, there's that's a long ways away from Atlanta where that stuff goes on. So you know. There are very, very few opportunities. And, you know, I think our staff does a great job of getting kids seen and getting kids recruited. But, you know, they're, they're the whole – during that summer when you get up there in the Emerson Park and you're playing that World Wood Bat stuff, there are a pile of people there at one given time that you can be seen. You know, in our in our game it only takes one time and it clicks for you. Somebody sees you one time and, and that can be the difference in, in scholarship or no scholarship. So uh, I think – that seven years old, yeah, I, I think sometimes it can be a grind when when you're playing, 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 and, and not actually working on the skill. Okay, Bob, you mentioned coach the tryouts uh, in the interview in sports. You know, it's a number you got to get to. So, yeah. how many kids are going to be cut from the team uh, in tryouts? You do? I guess that's still in debate. You know, we try to keep it somewhere in between thirty and and thirty five, somewhere in there. You know, the the biggest thing about our our program is is, is there there's Ninth, ninth graders, you know, there's so much that can change from a kid from one year to the next. So you want to be careful with what you do, and 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 you know, we're we're going to spend a week trying to, or, or three to four or five days on here trying to figure out what we want and what we want to keep. And you know, they're going they're going to come in, and we're going to meet with each one of them individually. And it, and if they're not fortunate to make it, and I said it for it, I'm a terrible husband, terrible dad. Uh, uh, I'm talking about this this week is no fun for me. I know it's. I, I, I look forward to baseball starting, but I don't look forward to tryouts and, and having to sit there. And So you're and, saying that only during tryouts? Yeah, yes. You don't want to say, to say that's a, is a policy all across 365 days a year, just, no, just during tryouts? No, just during Okay, yeah. just want to get that sure, straight out there, yeah, folks. Yeah, I'm sure. You I'm hear sure the coach my, say? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure my wife's listening, too, so she probably she probably, hey, she, she probably agrees to it. So, uh, But it's tough on me, you know, I – I don't sleep a lot. It bothers me when we, and, and it's just part of it. You know, if I could keep, if we could keep 45, we keep 45. That's just, that's just not, not conducive to how we want this thing to go. So, uh, again, it's going, it's, it's always a tough week, but we'll, we'll figure it out. And, you know, we'll get the ones that don't, we'll give them a list of stuff they need to go do to improve. And, you know, we've had kids that have went and done that. And we've had kids that, that have come back and made the team. And we've had kids that have done that and are off playing college baseball now. So again, it, it's, it's it's up to up to them whether or not they want to respond to it the right way and you know I, I mean we made we made mistakes before I've made mistakes so uh, sometimes we make a mistake every now and then and I'll be the first one to say I made it so uh, but again tough week but we'll get through it and, and get this thing rolling They're out there watching the looking at the field just I just amazed how green the grass is how good the field looks uh, you got to tip your cap to the maintenance staff and oh, yeah. home run club and everybody that pitches in making that field just look immaculate. Yeah, it does, and you know, there's a lot of a lot of people's hands that go into it, and you know, our kids have, have finally, I know, over the years, you know, one of the expectations is we're going to have the best facility that we play on, and you know, our kids have taken ownership of it. They they understand if if they see a clump of grass on the field, they'll go, they'll start picking it up. They understand what it's supposed to look like, and you know, McGill and his staff over there, they do an outstanding job, and our coaching staff is is constantly doing something on it. I know we got some stuff we got to get done before we start playing on it but again our home run club has has a uh, year in and year out put in money to to improve the facility and you know i wish i i wish that one thing i do regret is not taking pictures along the way just to kind of have a timeline of what it looked like and what it looks like now so you know we're always looking at ways to kind of improve the facility and, and you know I, I want it to be a place where people enjoy coming it, you know the atmosphere is is one of a kind but the the playing surface is right there too so again the 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 work that's put in you know that don't go unnoticed i know I, I i think i've been here uh 12 years and i think i'm the only one that's cut the grass until this year and, and coach browning has volunteered to start 
kind of cutting the grass you know i i enjoy it that's a little bit of time to myself and i know he does too so again we got two cutting grass now so uh again i i, I think it's only gonna get better got a fan here uh coach it says uh someone just text in uh best coaching staff in the georgia high school association baseball or ghsa baseball hands down well i appreciate it you know i we say I, i've always said that it, 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 we're a small part of this thing you know they're they our job's a whole lot easier because we have a lot of great players. And, you know, I, we can go back in my 12 years and just think about the players that have come through here in my 12 years of being here. I know the guys like him, come, Coach Browning, come through here, and that group that he come through here with was <laughs> – that's one of the top teams in, in this program that's ever come through here. So, you know, that that's what makes our job a lot easier is when you have great players that come through. And, you know, they're, they're constantly coming. You can see it down to the middle school. You can watch these kids win recreation state titles. You know, that little, that little group of the 9, 10, 11, 12 years old right now that was in the All-Stars last year, that group's going to be special too. So, you know, there's a lot of talent in that group, which makes our job a whole lot easier. Again, the region, uh, look, got the, they got magazine preview. They got us projected to be the region champions again. But it's always a tough region to understand. Statesburg picked up a kid, and he obviously is supposed to be pretty good. They're raving about him. Tell us about what the region looks like and who do you think the stiff competition is going to come from. Well, I think, you know, always Statesboro and South Effingham are, are, are right there at the top with you. And, you know, where's and, – and, you know, I hate this. You can't count any of them out. You know, you play three times. So the object of our, our mentality on a three-game series is just win game one. And then you put the pressure automatically on them. And, you know, you think that, you know, your mindset is win two out of three. But, you know, sometimes that don't always work out. If you win two out of three, there's a chance if somebody sweeps somebody that you didn't, then you're sitting behind them. So – you get to try, try to win them all, and you know I think Statesboro is is probably the one that uh, right now is on paper. They have some, you know, they got a guy that's on the cover of the preview magazine uh, that was that was a all region player last year. I think player of the year last year. So, but uh, again, we just have to come out and, and worry about us and worry about us getting better and and take it one game at a time. What made George High School Association finally see the light on the coin flip? You know, finally, you know, like I said, we, for years we played for home field advantage, and then game three you got to flip a coin, but they finally changed that rule. What what made them finally see the light? you have any idea? Well, I know I know uh, I'm, you're probably familiar with Billy Nicholson. He's the uh, president of our Georgia Dugout Club now, and uh, he uh, created this 12-member committee, and I was fortunate to be one of them on it. And, you know, we come up with some ideas that, that some things that coaches around the state thought should be changed. And, you know, I think one of them earlier was having tryouts a whole lot, having tryouts in August or the end of summer. And, you know, that was number one thing based on being able to fundraise with your kids throughout the year and you're not or, – or, or asking the kid to go raise money and not knowing if he was on the team. So, But that actually got – that got voted down by Georgia High School. And then free substitution and JV games, that was voted in. And then, of course, the, the coin toss, you know – I want, I'm not. I don't know what my record is on coin tosses, but I do know that a couple of years we have won them. We've had some kind of lucky coin in the dugout, and they would tell me <laughs> what it was on, and, and that's the time if we won. But if I had to call it on my on my own, I, I pretty much lost every time. So I'm glad it's changed. So hopefully we can host games and not have to worry about the game three fiasco. You know, you know, playing when you're playing at home, and then you you sometimes forget that you are the visitor, and it kind of messes up the whole mindset of. You know, for instance, something like the national anthem not taking the field when the game starts at home that that kind of throws off the old routine of playing at home. And you know, I'm glad that's changed. That, that's something that's been. I know you wrote letters, hey, <laughs> letter I after mean, letter. I, mean, I just so, didn't understand. Fi- maybe they, maybe that's why they, they finally I, read one. I, 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 think, so. box, <laughs> I think I think they ignore those letters. But I just you know, I'm just glad it finally changed because my argument was you play all year for home field. Yeah. What why? why what did you play for if you're not going to get home field in yeah. game three? It didn't make any sense. So. And and another good thing they've done, I think, in all sports, they do the universal coin toss, which right. when it gets to be like C's, they kind of you kind of you already know if you right. win and this team right. wins, right. then you're going to know you're going on the road. So, you know, I think that's another thing too, especially in baseball, because you know sometimes it gets to where there's only three or four days in between, say round two and round three. That gives you time to, you know, if. You know, one year in round two, we had to go all the way to Chattanooga, basically Ringgold, and, you know, that gives you a little more time to kind of figure out plans of, of travel and that type of stuff. Where's the state championship games? What did they decide on that? Did they decide the locations on those? Yeah, games? they have four sites. They have Rome, uh, Gwinnett, SunTrust, and Macon. You know, there's a lot of 
uh, I guess around the coaching where a lot of people not happy about the making site the way it was last year. It wasn't in very good shape to have a state championship game. So I've, I don't I don't know if that's going to change right now, but I think there's some push to kind of get that move somewhere else. But right now it's the three, of course, the Braves organization, their three stadiums, and then I'm sure there'll be one south of Macon somewhere. Someone just texted in that says the sunset picture was great. Yeah. I, I was so about, tell us about the sunset picture, Case. Well, we were talking about it before we went on the show. Yeah, I was I was out there putting out uh, some more rice seed on some spots that didn't come up too well, and I looked up, and there it was. So I just took it with my phone, and I guess it, that's and, no – And is it, where is it where are people seeing the, the, the picture? I guess, oh, social media. Social some, media. Yeah, social okay, media somewhere. Social media. So I guess uh, – it's no filter, too, so people think it was doctored up. It yeah, wasn't. No Every filter. now and then, you'll catch one out there, uh, whether at practice or staying late at the field. You'll catch a good one over in that area back behind our hip facility. So I guess when you get the opportunity, you got to take a picture. You never know what it turns out. So this is one. an interesting listener here. Uh, I've got the history of, of things they've texted in here over the last uh, couple of months. It said, back on December 18th, this listener let us, Bob and I know the price of our gold per ounce at fourteen hundred per ounce, and that was in December. Also in December, he said Jimmy the Greek died in nineteen ninety six, and now this listener said the sunset picture was great. So that's interesting. The, yeah. the comments this listener's um, putting in. Now, speaking of pictures, I go back every now and then look at those pictures when we played for the state championship down in Savannah. What a great scene that was! So hopefully we can get back to. I know that's the goal. So how do you think? The chances are, you're looking at this region, you know, I, I, you know that, that Georgia dugout magazine, they got the preseason All-State team. And I think Loganville's got six of the nine. <laughs> yeah. Where do they get all that talent in Loganville? I mean, it's always about pitching, too. Yeah, I'm not sure. But, you know, once you get in there, once those those teams get in that bracket, you know, anything can happen. And, you know, we're, we're, we play a tough schedule because, uh, heck, if you're going you're gonna, to – play them in a the regular season you can beat them in a the regular season you beat them in the playoffs you're going to, have to beat them beat every great team sometimes so i do know i i, I am guilty at sometimes of kind of peeking at the bra- bracket and you know it's the same uh format as football and and basketball it's the same bracket that goes through based on the region and the, the sea so you know right now you know we're going to cross over with a tough region in round one with jones county locust grove ola and, and that group so you know those three teams are always in the top 10, top 15 in the state. And then if you peak the round two, you're going to get the one and two from the Buford and Loganville region. So one of them is going to be one or two. So I'm talking about, for, again, like I said, we're not going to back down from it. We we want to play them here, and, and you know, we're just going to take it one game at a time. Once we get in there, whether we're a one or a four seed, you, you know, you can make a run at any spot. You know, that run for state title, those are some great memories. The scene at Locust Grove, the Buford – series here at home and uh, then the state finals in savannah i mean just there's some great memories i don't know about you but i mean i, I reminisce every now <laughs> those are some fun times especially those trip to locust grove that was yeah. that was a wild scene the, the people wild. locust grove still can't believe all the wayne county people showed up for that yeah so i catch myself listening to some of those uh calls that you made in that game and you know that 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 moment or that little run right there would always be special you know unfortunately we couldn't finish the deal but you know that's the expectation every year. You know, I, I I want as a coach, and I know our players do, and our coaching staff wants to get back in that situation. And you know, you, you get hot at the right time, and and you get things going in your direction. And you know, our big motto in our program is is you know we got a little motto, thirty one or one. You know, there's thirty two teams and going to make that bracket, and there's thirty one that are going to end not winning it, and and there's one that's going to be on the the receiving end of what everybody's chasing. So our little, we got 31 or one. We want to be one of 31 or we want to be the one. And right now we're working every day to be the one. Also, you know, we, we talk about DTW deserve to win. And that's, that's the big motto of, of everything you do every single day. Is it heading us and putting us in a situation where, we're, where things aren't going our way in a game or we, we're doing things the right way. So we deserve to win the game. And, you know, that's classroom, that's behavior at the school, uh, the way you show up for practice, the way you're out in your community. All that stuff goes into to, to that that motto and and what it means to our program. So uh, again, you know that's the always the expectation of of, of getting to that situation. I wouldn't want to coach anywhere that was not the expectation of, of winning a state championship. And you know our kids are are, are are working each day to get there. Well, it's always nice to be in the hunt. I said, been nice to be knocking on the door the last couple of years. So hopefully sooner or later we'll knock the door down and get that state title that everybody's looking for. But the talent's there, and you know, I said pitching. It all begins with pitching. Barrett, you know, you've seen the arms of uh, Jasper, Ray Towns, and the list goes on and on. We have got some talented pitchers. So, if the defense and hitting comes through, you know, you got a 
great shot to possibly win it all. Absolutely. I, I <clears throat> told Coach McDonald and, and Coach Brockton, and, and uh, the problem we have right now, the, what I don't like about high school baseball is we get seven innings. Um, fortunately, in, in Wayne County, we've got – I've got enough arms. I, we would be even better in the state if we played nine because we've got a deeper – staff than i think any other any other um team in the state has we've got enough arms we could throw nine innings five times a week if we had to i mean we've got that kind of quality arms and we've got that many of them um so i I wish that was the case it's not so we've got a lot of guys that are going to be deserving and capable of pitching for us in the innings but the innings may not be there so um you got starters that go five innings six innings that don't leave but one or two left per game so unfortunately there's going to be some guys we're going to try to find some ways to get them involved um, but it, it's exciting. I, I mean, I, I think we've got a, uh, a great group uh, all around, and I think we can play all three. If we can win two of the three of them each game, I think we're going to win a lot of ball games. As a pitching coach, how do you determine who's the starter, who's a reliever, who's a closer? You know, Do you look for a closer right now? Do you see a potential closer out there right now? Demeanor to me is the big thing, and stuff. That, you know, what we say when we call stuff is their, their um, pitches, You know how nasty they are if you want to word it that way. Um, typically a guy that's either funky or throws hard um, with a good breaking ball or a good change up uh, will be the guy we're looking to close um, and the starters are typically guys that are going to have the ability to throw three pitches for strikes at any time um, and that can um, locate the fastball to me that's the biggest thing um, I'm, I'm going to have them throwing fastball 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 we're going to get as many outs with them as we can um, I know there's a time in the last couple of years I went out there and told the guys we're, I'm throwing them fastballs and, and showed them and our pitchers it's tough to hit. It's tough even when you know it's coming. And I think that that was a, a good thing. And some of those younger guys back then are now the older guys and the leaders um, of this this group. And uh, if they can command three pitches, they'll pitch and they'll, they'll be more likely to start. And if they've got some nasty stuff or some heat, they'll be coming in in the end to shut it down for us. That's the reason why you've got all these uh, scouts coming in when you've got a pitcher somewhere who can throw a, a ball anywhere from 95 in that area. Uh, if, you know, you'll see them out there with their guns and everything, and they may be a so-so pitcher, but if they got that heat, I think that the uh, colleges think that they can, or the um, or the professional teams think they can develop their arm. But you know, it's it's like in in, in football, you know, you you're either you either got the speed or you're chasing it. And uh, in baseball, I guess if you've got that speed, that uh, in terms of the how fast you can throw that ball, it's di- very difficult to hit. From what you know, is what you're saying there. If you can, it's hard to hit that fat, that really fast fastball. Absolutely. If they can throw it over the plate, if they can throw it in the zone, it makes you know. Yeah. It, it's definitely a tough thing to do. Hitting hitting a baseball is probably the hardest thing in any sport. Um, well, you got a round ball and a round bat, and it's coming in at you anywhere from around eighty to ninety five miles an hour. And sometimes it's doing the Watusi coming up there. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We hope it is. <laughs> That's what we're trying to teach them. We'll close that on this note. You know, leadership's always a key part. How about your senior leadership? How many seniors you got on this year's team? Oh, we'll have three. And you know, this is this number's been. Uh, you know, you know, we look back and and try to figure out what went wrong with this class. There's only been uh, there was only been three since they come into the ninth grade, and we have one move out and one move in. So right now we have three seniors. Uh, fortunately. The junior class has played – most of those guys played a sophomore, so they kind of step in. You know, they, I've, I've, I've said this. I think those guys, those juniors, they'll just have two senior years, basically what it boils down to. But I think our senior class is, is strong. And, you know, all three of those guys, and, and, you know, we pride ourselves on getting these guys opportunities to play at the next level. And, and you know, I think these three, I think we'll be 100% on these guys getting to play at the next level. You know, I'll use the holidays during Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. You see the guys that are playing. You know, it's fun to go out to the field and, and see those guys out there that, that played last year and, and the years before out there working and, and, and getting ready for their upcoming season. But I think these three uh, also get the opportunity to go play, and I think they're going to do a great job in leading us. Somebody just tried to text in a video. Uh, our 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 text is unable to process videos in very long text. text so, Whoever sent this video in, we cannot look at it. Okay, Bob. Again, appreciate y'all coming in. Look forward to the season. Again, as you mentioned, scrimmage February 4th, first game February 10th, and then it all kicks in, 30 games on the schedule, home and away. We'll have them all here right on Big Dog Country at 105.5. Always look forward to it. Should be fun. Looking forward to another good year with Wankin High School Baseball. Yeah, I was going to mention real quick, our coaching staff, you know, I guess I'm at the top of this thing, but, you know, I – there's times where those guys are doing more, you know, Coach Browning and, and Coach Brockett in, and then we have community coaches, Coach Starling and Coach Roberts. You know, they, 
you know, you know I've, I've, we've been fortunate here in my nine years to have kind of have stability in the staff and have guys that that are here and you know you know we want guys to i want guys to work under us and and move up to to whether it's head jobs or or, or other jobs that that are, are moving up or you know I, I want that but you know having stability in the staff i think that's a that's been a big part of our success and you know having a continuity of, of what we expect of each other i know i know just being with coach browning over the last three or four years you know it's i think we're a lot alike the way we think and the way we we want to handle situations and you know coach brock didn't play for us and 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 then you got coach starling coach roberts who's been in this community for years and then they know what the expectation is so you know i think that's a big part of our success along with having great players and you know it goes all the way down you know we, wayne county baseball is not just what happened at the high school it what happens at the middle school and the recreation department and you know those those we did a little thing in the fall with some skill development with some of those travel ball teams and trying to teach them the wayne county way and you know they were that was from eight years old up to to 12 13 and i think that was a big success for us kind of implementing what we do at that level and let those coaches understand and and they're taking it and going uh, week by week and, and improving each week and we're going to continue to do that over the next few years or as long as i'm here so uh, i think that's important to develop that skill from a young age and and have them ready to go when they get to us well can appreciate y'all coming in we'll look forward to the, the season again tryouts in this week is that right you'll have the that's team right. set yeah. by friday yeah. afternoon yeah, by there, who's yeah. Wing, so yeah, and again, as you mentioned, Cole Brockton does a good job of the yeah, JV program, so it'll be a fun time out there at the ballpark. Again, I tried I was, to get him to come with us, but you know he's a he's a uh, science guru at the high school. He's one of the best science players. guru. I, I, I'll be honest, he's, he does a great job in the classroom too. You know, I you know I, I'm fortunate to be a PE teacher and a coach Browning. PE teacher. We don't spend a lot of time in the classroom, but he does a great job. He is in there pounding it right now, so he he enjoys it and he does a great job, but. Uh, like I said, he does. He does an outstanding job with our JV. All right. Okay, good, guys. All right. Appreciate y'all coming in. Appreciate right, it. Thank you. Just- all right, WIFO 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, world famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by Nibs Car Wash located on Highway 301 South here in Jessup, just past McDonald's on the left hand side, and by Murphy Butter Supply on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup, right down from the big red caboose. The time now is 8.39. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, your official weather forecast for Wayne and surrounding counties. The all-out blowout is on at the home of the sweet deal. Woody Folsom Nissan Vidalia. We give you more car for your money and more money for your car. Let's trade rides. All remaining 2019 Ultimates. Take $5,000 off MSRP. All remaining 2019 Pathfinders. Take $6,500 off. Get maximum savings on Maximus. All remaining 2019 Maximus. Rip that sticker and save $7,000. These cars are made by Nissan and priced by Woody. So talk to us and we'll pop a deal on it. Popping ain't stopping. Check us out online at Woody FolsomNissan.com or both sides of East First Street by day. Or we also have 0% options on select vehicles when you finance with NEMAC. Hot news. Just removed from rental. 10 and only 10 2018 Nissan Kicks. Snap them up for $14,989. Get in here to the all-out blowout at Woody Folsom Nissan by Dahlia. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Wait, talk to me. All right, America, H&R Block has some good news for taxpayers this year. Check this out. For a limited time only, you could get a refund advance loan of up to $3,500 the same day you file that block. That's right. You could get up to $3,500, no interest. Why wait weeks for your refund when you could get money at Block today? See, told you it was good news. To learn more or find participating locations near you, visit hrblock.com. Get money faster. Get your taxes won, not your tax refund. $250, $500, seven. $750, $1,250 $750, or $3,500 loans offered. Approval on loan amount based on expected refund and other conditions. Funds loaded on prepaid card. Tax returns may be e-filed without applying for this loan. Fees for other optional products or product features may apply. Limited time offer. Make an appointment by calling our Jessup office at 912-427-7769. Your H&R Block is conveniently located next to Goodwill and Walmart in Jessup. This is an optional tax refund loan from Access Bank, member FDIC. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO FM in Jessup, 105.5 on your FM dial. Good morning, Butch Hubbard here with you. It is a Wednesday morning, 15th day of January at 841. And let's take a look at your official weather forecast for Wayne and surrounding counties. Variable cloudiness day, probably more clouds than sun. Variable cloudiness.